want to create stunning AI images absolutely for free, no watermarks, no dodgy websites, all running locally on your computer and completely free to use. Well, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how you can do that with the latest AI image generation model from Stable Diffusion and having it in a really nice, easy to use interface using Comfy UI. This means no cloud, no limit, total control, and absolutely free to use. We're gonna walk through every single step nice and easy throughout this. And if you come across to our community, come across the classroom, come down to where we've got local AI, you'll be able to access all of this for free, including all of the commands and all the different steps that we run through so that you can get it set up nice and easy. But first things first, we're going to come across to Stable Diffusion 3.5. This is a great image model that's been developed by Stability AI. There's three different versions of it. So we're going to come down here. We've got the large version, which has 8.1 billion parameters. This is really good for the use cases where you've got some high-end GPUs, especially around NVIDIA. You need over 16 gigabytes of RAM really to use this, but it's going to give you that best possible output. If you're looking for something a little bit more light touch, but still giving you some really good outputs, that's where you're able to use Turbo from 3.5, and it's going to give you some more real-time generation, but it's not going to give you the same quality as that large one. What we can also do is use Medium. This is a really good blend of both, and you're able to run it on something that's a little bit more light to touch, like a laptop, because it's got some lower requirements on what you need to run it. But it's still got that really great quality that you'll be able to use. If we come a bit further down, we'll see that it's got all of these different optimizations. It's got some of the scores a bit further down, so you can see how it compares. This is really good if we come across to actually artificial analysis, which is an independent analysis tool that analyzes all of the latest, greatest AI. We'll see that Stable Diffusion is definitely one of the top models out there. And again, this is completely free to use. There's other ones like Hydream that we could try and look to use as well locally. But some of these are ones you have to pay for. And how much are we saving? Well, if we come across to replicate, this is where we can run it on an API request. We'd be paying around $0.065 per image. So we're saving that money every single time we run it locally. So to get it set up, I will need to come across to the link below. We'll include it all ready to go. We're going to click on where we've got Stable Diffusion 3.5. This is going to take you across to Hugging Face. You're going to need to make sure to set up an account. This platform is completely free to use. Before we go through the rest of the video, make sure to hit subscribe. We cover lots around AI and automation on this channel. And it really helps us grow. Drop any other ideas and videos you want to see in the comments below as well. You can run it through a nice, easy, low-code interface. And if we come across to Stability AI, we come down to where we've got the spaces. You can see all of the different ones available. If you were to click on medium, you'd be able to run it on here for free within your usage limits of hugging face. But again, depending on the peak time that you're using it, this won't give you an output. So just keep that noted. If we come back across, we're going to come back to the model details that we've got once you've set up an account. And as you can see here, it's got that GitHub repository. So we know we can run it locally. If we come back to the top, we're going to come across to files and versions. You're going to need to come down and download this 3.5 medium safe tensors. Again, you can do exactly the same for the large or turbo. It's just going to have that larger requirement for the data. As you can see here, this is going to take up around five gigabytes of storage on our local computer. Once you've done that, you also need to come across into text encoders and download these files here which is going to help us guide the generation of our image a little bit later on and make sure they're all saved in a folder nice and easy. So as you can see here, I've got them all saved in a files folder that we're going to be able to use for this video. So make sure you've got it all installed, ready to go. And as you can see here, once it's all installed, you're going to have five items that are around 26 gigabytes, which is what we're going to need from the image generation. Now we've done that, we're going to come back across we're going to need to install Homebrew, which is going to enable us to run Python locally. Python is just one of the coding languages out there. It's the best way to be able to get the output that we want and install the Comfy UI that we need a bit later on. I'll include the link below. You need to come across to Homebrew. As you can see here, you're going to have this command. What you need to do is open up your terminal and then you want to come down, 
copy this command here, paste it into the terminal and load it up. It's going to ask you for your password. That's absolutely okay to use. You just want to do enter and it's going to start installing it. Brew is a really good way of just making sure you've got everything stored in the central place and you can put different personas around it for the environments and what you can give it access to like you would in Python. So there we go. I'm now all installed and updated. The next part, if we come across to here, we want to check the Python that we're currently running. So we're going to paste this command in here, which is going to tell us back. We're currently running on Python 3.11. Some of the different tools out there, for example, the other video, make sure to check that out around using the AI voice locally required us to run on Python 3.10. In this case, we need to be running on 3.11 to get the outputs. So we're all good to go there. If you've not done that before, make sure to come down here copy brew install come back across paste that in there and it's just going to go through the process of installing it so as you can see it's already installed so it's not letting us do it again the next part we need to come down and tell our laptop that we're using that version of python so we're just going to copy this and then paste in here for that next command you're not going to get a response back that's absolutely fine we just need to make sure we're getting that out what we're going to do next is as you can see here we've got it all downloaded for that latest version we did that a bit earlier on I didn't download the example workflow though. This is so we can set it up nice and easy a little bit later on. So we're going to come back across. We're going to come down to our files here. So if you're on the model card, come across to files. And then we're going to download this example workflow here or this one. And we'll be able to use that. We'll save that in the same folder we had from a bit earlier on. Now if we come back across, what we'll be able to see is the next couple of steps. Now come for UI. This is going to be a nice easy interface for us to be able to generate the output without having to run this through Python and more of a terminal. So we're going to come down to here. We're going to open up this link here. There we go. And this is a Git repository just around how we're able to install it, use it. And this is what it's going to look like a little bit later on, which is a much easier interface to work with. Then going through the terminal and trying to get the output. So as you can see here, there's different installing packets that you can use. What we're going to do though, as you can see here, lots of different commands. We're going to be coming through and using the comfy install through our terminal. So we're going to come back across. We're going to copy this here. This is going to clone comfy UI to our desktop. So we're going to open our terminal back up. We're then going to paste this command in here. Now it's going to download all of this to our local desktop so that we can run it nice and easily. We're just going to wait for this to come back. This is really quick. And as we can see there, we're all good to go. Now we want to activate a virtual environment so that we can go through and test this safely. We're then going to send that command off. As you can see there, it's going to spit it up for us. And then we should get, as you can see, brackets, V-E-N, brackets. Alex Follower on MacBook Pro Comfy UI, so it knows we're in this virtual environment and we're leveraging Comfy UI. We're going to make sure that we install any of the dependencies. So we're going to come down and copy this, paste that in here. So there we go. We will come back. We're just going to run this command here just to upgrade the pip for us to be able to use. You don't need to worry about that. It's not specific for this. It's just really good to have the latest version. We're now going to be able to get the model in the correct Comfy UI folder. So what we're going to do is come back into our files. What we're then looking for is on our desktop, we should have Comfy UI automatically installed. We're going to need to come through and add the files that we downloaded a little bit earlier on into here. So first things first, we want to come down to where we've got models. We're going to come through to checkpoints and we're going to open this up in here. This is where we're going to add our stable diffusion. So now what I need you to do is get where you've got your standard diffusion, medium, safe tensors and pull that across to the checkpoint. This is going to make sure that we can use stable diffusion locally on our computer. Once we've done this, we're going to wait for it to come back. We're then going to come down to clips. We're then going to come to the left hand side here and we're going to copy these two clips that we downloaded from Hugging Face Standard Diffusion 3.5 a bit earlier on. We're going to add them in here. The next part we need to do is come across to where we've got our TXXL safe sensors. We're going to come down to where we've got our text encoders. And then we're just going to pull this across into here so that we're all set up from the infrastructure point of view to be able to use that model nice and easily. So there we go. We've now got all of the encoders moved across. We can come back. And what we're going to be looking to do is actually generate our first image. So all we need to do is copy this, 
come back across to our terminal and because we're in our virtual environment and we've got comfy ui set up all we need to do is send this off and it's going to spin up the environment for us within comfy ui as you can see there we're now going through and getting it all set up what we're doing is we're waiting for a url to be shown like this local host here so that we're able to go through and generate our image all locally nice and easy for free so there we go now what i'm going to do is copy this url here we're going to copy this come across to a browser so we can do google in this case we're going to paste that in there and now we're going to have it all set up to generate the images locally they've got some comfy ui examples are ready to go but we're going to close this down and come into a unsaved workflow now this is where our example is going to come into play that we had a little bit earlier on so what i want you to do is go back into your folders you're then going to find this example workflow json you can pull it across and it will load it up for you all nice and easily and automatically to run steel diffusion 3.5 once this will set up it should look something like this we're going to need to come through and just change some of these clips because we've added in a bit a different way we're going to add our clip g save sensor we're going to do that again for this one here and then we're just going to come through and update our fp16 so again we're using the version for the way that we've named it in our folders we're now running in the comfy ui interface so this is where we're going to be able to generate our images as you can see here this is where we're going to do the size of the image that we want as well as the number of images we're going to get back we've got the prompt in here as well so we've got a master class in our community that covers how to get the best outputs all around optimizing the tokens that you use as well as any of the techniques around getting the right wording advanced foundations and you've got some example resources to get set up nice and easily if we come back across what we'll also be able to do is come across to the right hand side here we've got some of the conditioning but one of the key parts i want to show you is this command here now we go into more depth in the master class in the community but what we're looking at is steps is the number of denoising steps in the process and what this is essentially doing is improving that quality to some extent the more runs it has because it's going to be adding layers and layers on top of that image from a really clunky noisy process at the start a really crisp clear image at the end we've also got some other ones in here they're not as much of an importance seed is if you want that repeatability around a specific image this is where you need to make sure that that seed is always added in there so that you can do this now if you want to give this a test we'll be able to see the output on the right hand side here we'll come back to our prompt in here we're going to paste our request in here we're going to come down to the bottom we can do run instant or run and what we're going to do is come to the left hand side here we'll be able to press run it's then going to go through load it all up for us so that we're ready to go what we'll be able to see is this green box is going to move through the process so it's now at the loader it's now going to go through the rest of them here we're then going to be able to get to the last step in the process which is just around our key sampler so that fine tuning around what we want before we come through and generate our image so let's just wait for this to come back now so there we go we're now almost there and if you come back into your terminal actually it will show you how long it's taken to generate that image so as you can see here we're currently at the two percent and is going through those 40 denoising steps to be able to try and get that output that we're looking for for this image so we'll just wait for this to come back and as you can see here we've also got the progress bar at the top just to see how long it takes to generate the image so there we go we've now got our image back and as you can see on the right hand side here we're able to get that image absolutely for free it doesn't look 100 percent, and that's where i'd go through and increase the steps so if i just rerun this again but we bump it up to 100 steps you should see how that output improves so there we go we've got our image back and as we can see it's a little bit better quality but this just really depends on the power of the boot that sits behind it for the number of steps that come through the other thing that's really key to note is if we come across you'll see here that it took 11 minutes to be able to generate this image when and it was 325 seconds for the other one so if you're looking for something that's really fast i definitely would look to use some of the paid versions with replicate or if you've got a more powerful laptop you'd be able to get this done back in a faster time i'm using an m1 max macbook pro and it still took this time to be able to get those results back I'll also put some other photos over the top now that just show you the comparison of the different quality for this free version versus paid for using it with different platforms again you can fine tune 
lots of different ways of using stable diffusion. By no means is this the expert guide on exactly how to do that. But this is to help you get set up nice and quickly and easily by using stable diffusion. There are so many other models out there, as we saw on stable on hugging face. If we come across to models, we come down to where we've got our text to image. As we can see here, so many different ones to choose from. Not all of these can be run locally on your computer, but some of these you can run for free in the web interface. Or I recommend you come across to platforms like Replicate. They got so many different image generation tools available. And for example, if you were to come down and use Black Forest Labs Dev, you're only paying 0.025 cents per image, and you're going to get it back in under 10 seconds for a lot of the images you generate. Make sure to hit subscribe, stay tuned for more around AI agents automation, and have a great day.